Hi, this is Dr. Rafi Israel, and I'm here to talk about uh, immersion biometry and how to use easy immersion tip by micromedical devices. Easy immersion tip is a new immersion tip that can be used instead or in conjunction with the Prager shell. Palm scan uh, is introducing the easy immersion tip, which is a small uh, plastic soft uh, immersion shell that's inside the pouch. The proper way to open the pouch is to grab the two peels and peel the pouch without letting the easy immersion tip fall, to fall out. It uses the same uh, A-scan transducer that can be used for Prager shell. If you're using the Prager shell, we recommend that you place the uh, transducer and align it with this line right here on the Prager shell. And I usually align it with that line and make sure that the wire is coming out on the same location that the tubing intake is, the lower in intake. And then I fasten the screw which prevents the transducer from moving. The proper way of placement of the easy immersion tip is to, after opening the package, is place the transducer inside the package and bring out the easy immersion tip. The proper placement of the tip is such that the tip is tight against the step off at this location and it's completely perpendicular to the uh, transducer. Now I want to talk about the, the proper way to uh, feel the easy immersion tip. So once you have the easy immersion tip properly on the A-scan transducer, uh, I will usually use the BSS solution. And one bottle of BSS actually can go uh, a long way. And uh, you can probably, probably do over 50 patients with one bottle. So it takes two drops of BSS to fill the chamber. And what you want to see is you want to test the stability of the chamber by holding the uh, easy immersion tip up. And you want to notice the small meniscus on top of the uh, chamber. And next, you want to turn it upside down and make sure that the meniscus is holding. And by doing that, uh, you basically test the integrity of the seal around the easy immersion tip and the transducer and make, making sure that there is no leak or leakage of the water. When you're ready to scan the patient, uh, first thing you want to make sure is that the machine is set on Im immersion and if the patient is has a normal cataract uh, and 99% of the time on a normal patient, I will start with a normal cataract eye, eye type. The eye sight, the right and left, are selected down here. So right now, OD is selected, and um, you can select OS by pressing the button OS on the lower, hand, uh, lower left hand side of the screen. Uh, to start scanning, you can press the start. And as you can see, the red LED will be blinking. So at this time, I would have the uh, patient cover the fellow eye. So I would have him cover the left eye. And after properly anesthetizing the eye, I would just uh, slowly approach the eye until the cornea becomes in contact with the meniscus. And I uh, 
usually instruct the patient to keep on looking the, at the blinking light as I uh, touch uh, the meniscus to the eye. At this point, I would like to talk about the proper amount of meniscus dome that is needed for uh, to operate the easy immersion tip. In my opinion, the proper amount of meniscus dome is just about one to two millimeter above the tip of the easy immersion tip. And the reason that uh, that makes it an ideal amount of dome is that when you start the machine and the patient is fixating to the center, they should be able to see the LED light at the center of the easy immersion tip. Now, if I put a larger meniscus, for example, this large, uh, while there is more water to uh, keep more separation to the cornea, However, when you turn the tip toward the patient, because of the relative distortion of the tip, as you can see, the gravity will pull the uh, water down and distort the lens. And that will work as a prism, which will make the LED look somewhat higher than it actually is. And that causes a misalignment between the uh, transducer and the retina. So I recommend that the perfect amount of fluid is about this much, not much at all. And if, if you use that, you basically uh, going to transfer only the top layer of the fluid to the patient's eye, and uh, most of it will stay in, inside the chamber even after the uh, examination is over. Next is I want to talk about um, the differences that patient, uh, doctors have talked to me between capturing the right and the left eye. While there is no difference in the machine as far as the right and left setting, there is, however, uh, a difference in how the operators usually hold their hands in relationship to the patients if they are sitting on one side versus the other side. By that, I mean, if you're sitting on the right side of the patient, it's usually much easier to scan the right side of the eye because you can look from the side and make sure that you're perpendicular to the eye and as you approach, you approach the eye in that uh, axis. However, if you are sitting from the right and scanning the patient on the left side, there is a tendency to be either on the uh, horizontally off axis by being on the left or right lateral position or be slightly on top or down position. Uh, fortunately, after a few scans, most operators uh, overcome this uh, without any uh, Hard, hardness on them. However, at the beginning, I recommend uh, to uh, put the patient down, uh, so uh, recline them maybe about uh, 10 to 15 degrees. That way you can be on top and be uh, perpendicular to the eye as you approach the eye. And after trying this a few times, I think uh, the learning curve for it is not that high and probably after five or six eyes, you'll be able to just as easy uh, scan the left eye while you're sitting on the right as you are doing the right eye. Now I want to talk about uh, some situations that might be difficult to capture, in particular when patients have a dense cataract and problem with fixation. What we recommend is first start as with um, normal cataract for most patients. So I would start with normal cataract in 99% of the patients to begin with. If I can't capture uh, immediately or after a, a few trial of maybe 20 to 30 seconds, then um, if the patient has dense cataract, I would use either average velocity setting or the uh, nuclear cataract setting 
to capture the eye. And the reason for that is uh, as the patient has more and more cataract, the patient's posterior lens spike might attenuate. In this echogram, uh, I have captured the echogram of this patient with a very dense cataract. And what you can see is usually the anterior and posterior corneal spike, there is no difference. But you can see uh, anterior lens spike with a lot of um, spikes and echo, uh, echoes behind the um, anterior lens spike inside the lens. And this is the posterior lens spike. Now, normally, if the posterior lens spike uh, comes up to threshold, uh, you should be able to capture immediately, even on the densest cataract, uh, because the retina is not, uh, the retinal spikes are not uh, usually the problem. It's usually the uh, posterior lens spike that doesn't come to the threshold level. So if you uh, try to capture uh, and you're unsuccessful to capture uh, on the patient because the patient is either not straight or uh, the posterior lens spike is not coming up to the threshold level, then we recommend that you change the eye setting from normal to either... So if you change the eye setting from normal to the average velocity, then that will take out the constraint for the posterior lens spike and you should be able to capture immediately on um, any eye. While easy immersion tip helps alleviate the difficulties associated with the hard immersion shell, mostly the water running down the patient and filling out the water, uh, there are, however, times that uh, it's still uh, useful to use the hard immersion shell. And those situations are uh, patients with corneal surface anomalies. Uh, and what happens is, uh, for example, a patient who has uh, some uh, epithelial uh, scar or epithelial uh, problem that the surface is not completely straight, uh, as you touch the meniscus of water to the cornea, the, that causes the water to sip through and you'll never have a good meniscus uh, holding between the easy immersion tip and the cornea. Uh, the other people are people who have very difficult time fixating and moving their eyes and people who have blepharospasm and have a lot of spasm as you approach the eye with the uh, immersion tip, uh, with the easy immersion tip. So those uh, candidates will still um, need to use the hard immersion tip but in my practice, uh, I have been able to do over 95% of the, my patients uh, very easily uh, with an easy immersion tip. And the uh, conversion of, between uh, using the Prager shell and converting to how to use the easy immersion tip uh, for me and my staff was relatively easy. Uh, it's actually has come somewhat going back to how we were doing contact uh, biometry and uh, it's much more similar to contact biometry in my opinion than immer immersion biometry while it gives you the same exact uh, results.